It was starting to feel like innovations in the 3D printing world were starting to wind down a little bit with most companies just copying each other. But I can see now the next generation of 3D printers are gonna be affordable tool changer style printers. They're gonna allow us to print more colors and more materials without the waste in time or filament, at least not as much. If, and I hope when that does happen, it does mean we have to do more manual calibrations. If each filament takes at least 20 minutes to calibrate, I can't imagine ever wanting to do all that manually. So is it gonna be possible to avoid having to do constant calibrations on all of those different filament colors and materials and nozzle sizes? The answer could be inside of this printer here, the Bamboo Lab H2D, and the unique approach that it takes to calibrating filament. But to be absolutely sure, I think we need to put it to the test. So stick around. I've been thinking a lot about the next generation of printers and what they need to be able to do. And I think multi-material and multi-color are very important, but I also think non-planar and other ways to improve the print strength are also equally as important. The tool changes are coming and I think they're gonna be incredibly popular, but they need to calibrate filament automatically and they need to do it quickly as well because I don't know about you, but I'm not standing there doing it manually for each material. It's gonna take way too much time especially if I'm in a time crunch. And that made me think about this printer, the Bamboo H2D. I have in my nearly 600 print hours on this machine, never once calibrated for flow rate or pressure advance. They also call it flow dynamics, even when I'm printing tight fitting parts. With the last generation from Bamboo, they used Micro LiDAR, also known as Dual Red Laser Scanning. It did pressure advance and also flow rate, which allowed it to compensate for the speed changes and also adjust for volume. And it was pretty good, but not perfect because the results were dependent on filament color and transparency, and also the build plate and likely other factors like the brightness in the room and whether the door was open or closed. Bamboo then moved to a different system on their A1 series of printers, which uses eddy current to measure nozzle pressure. And although I don't have an A1 myself, from the reviews and the print results that I've seen, it does seem to work quite well. And now we have the next generation in the Bamboo H2D, which uses not only eddy current for nozzle pressure, but also has a completely new extruder motor setup called a PMSM, a permanent magnet synchronous motor, that's able to measure the torque and resistance and motor position. That means that it can use the eddy current nozzle pressure in conjunction with the motor data for even better print results. What's interesting is that it doesn't actually extrude filament onto any surface on the build plate to do the measurements. Instead, it does an extrusion over the poop chute and that's it. So will it be absolute perfection? Well, I don't see that being possible. There's just too many factors involved but I think it might be good enough to do the job automatically so the tolerances are tight and our printed parts will fit together properly. This printer also has one other sensor and that is a nozzle camera, but from what I've read, it's not being used for calibration, it's being used for defect detection instead, and maybe in the future it could be used to assist in calibration as well though. So to test this, Bamboo already knows their own filament specs well with their machines and their machines are fine tuned to print with it. So what I'd like to do is print some non-bamboo filament as well. So I have a bunch of different colors and I also wanted to try this wood fiber filament also. So none of these are from bamboo. I have four which are from Ad North and they are the color matches to some of the popular power tool brands. And then I have this one here which is from Sunlu, and this one I have printed with only once, and it is extremely brittle. So I have made sure that all of these are properly dried, and this one here I'm actually kind of wary of because even dry, it's still fairly brittle. So you can see basically nothing is populated right now, so we can edit them. And what I found is that I like to use bamboo, even though it's not a bamboo brand, I will use bamboo anyway. I think that it actually produces better results, and the other thing is that it will make sure that the speed remains high. If you don't select bamboo, and you select generic instead, it will tend to keep the speed quite low on those prints. So I don't think there's a need to do that. And in this one we have red, and it is PLA basic. 
I actually don't know, does bamboo make a wood product? Let's see. I don't think I've seen one. Oh, they do. It's in the list. Bamboo PLA wood. So we're going to go with that one. And they have brown. They do. Excellent. I may have printed with some of these colors before and some of these materials before. And there can be data that is saved in bamboo printers from the previous prints. So I want to make sure we override that because I don't want to use that information again. It's going to be completely wrong in this case and throw off our results. So instead, in the print, I'm going to make sure that I turn it from auto to on. So it's going to be doing it every single time, regardless of whether I have printed with this material before. So to test this idea, what I'd like to do is print these bamboo test cubes. I've printed a couple samples already. We can measure the width, we can measure the depth, and we can measure the height as well. We can also measure some of those interiors. And then what we can do after that is done for each of these different colors, we can go over to calibration. Go to flow rate calibration, and then we'll do a manual calibration for each one of these colors. And after that manual calibration, we can reprint them and then compare them against the originals that we've printed and see how much of a difference there is. We want to have a fair amount of walls in there. And the reason for that is because if you only have two walls, we're only looking at the intersection of those two walls affecting the overall extrusion size. The more walls we have, the more likely it is that they're going to intersect each other and conflict with each other. And if it's over extruding, then we're going to see that over extrusion. We're going to go from right hand side to left hand side. And if we click on this where it says homing tool head, we can see the fourth one down calibrating dynamic flow. So it is going to do that in this case for the yellow filament. So right now it's just changing filament. making sure the existing filament is all purged out. And now it's calibrating for dynamic flow. That was for dynamic flow. And this was for the filament change. So I printed enough of these cubes so I have a first round and I can take some measurements, but I ran into a bit of a problem here. Look at this one. So this green filament here produced some of the worst results I've ever seen on the Bamboo H2D. And so I decided to print the exact same filament on my Prusa Mark IV-S. And although the results are not fantastic, they're definitely much better. Now this is printed quite slow in comparison to the H2D. So what I decided to do is set the filament to generic rather than to a bamboo filament. And I did that for every single one of the ones from Ad North. I actually did it for the Sunlu one as well. And this is the result. So I was able to get a much better result. It is not perfect, but it doesn't seem to matter which machine I printed on. I'm still getting not ideal results. So I did take a minute and I took some measurements of about a 10 foot long section comparing the green ad north. You can see I have a quite a swing here, 0.77 all the way down to 0.72. Did the same with a Prusament just to compare. So I have a 0.05 millimeter variation on this one, that's the maximum. And here I have a 0.01 millimeter variation. And that is the result of the Prusament print, very, very good, very clean print. The number ones are not going to be used for measurements. The number twos are going to be used. And the Sunlu, I did get a little bit better result when I slowed it down or I set it to generic as well. And you can see the result for the Sunlu here. So the Sunlu results are also quite good. The issue with the Sunlu is just that it was very brittle. So what I'm going to do now is take all of the measurements of the width, of the depth, and of the height of the number two sample, 
or in some cases I only needed to print one sample because the first one was quite good. I'm also gonna take the same measurements but of the hollow or of the inside there as well, just so we have a little bit more reference information too. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to run the flow rate calibration for each of the samples. And then I'm gonna go ahead and reprint these cubes as well, take the measurements again, and then we'll compare. I took the negative values and converted them into positive and that way we can total the average deviation. I intentionally left out any measurement in the Z axis and that's because those values are not directly tied to the flow rate like the other ones are. With only dynamic flow calibration, I ended up with an average deviation of 0.095 millimeters across the X and Y dimensions. If you remove the wood fiber filament, which was way out there compared to the other ones, we have an average difference of 0.052 millimeters, so quite a bit better. And for reference, any parts that I like to try and fit together will usually have a clearance of anywhere between 0.04 millimeters up to 0.2 millimeters, and that depends on the print size and the amount of surfaces that are in contact with each other. And most of the filaments that I tested fell within an acceptable range and the parts would fit together. Now if we compare that to filaments which were flow rate calibrated manually, in addition to the dynamic flow calibration, the results were better overall. The average overall deviation was 0.064 millimeters compared to the original 0.095 with the wood fiber. And I did struggle a little bit to calibrate the wood fiber for flow rate and I still ended up with a somewhat poor result. So if again we exclude that result from the total, we ended up with a 0.038 millimeters difference compared to the non-flow rate calibrated of 0.052. So it is better of course, but I have to say, I was kind of hoping for something a bit better than that. We only have a difference with the wood filament of 0.030 and without it, it was 0.014 millimeters. So very, very small difference. So because these are such small values in engineering type applications where precision is extremely important, maybe a manual calibration is still gonna be critical, but it looks to me like even with using filaments which are not precisely calibrated like the ones that I use from Ad North, my test still showed that with the exception of the wood fiber, the results were actually still within an acceptable range. From an accuracy standpoint, Prusament still reigns supreme, but the bamboo filaments were actually quite good as well. If we look at the before and after results from the flow rate calibration, the deviation actually was higher after we calibrated than it was before. In other words, I actually didn't do a good job during the manual calibration step and it didn't improve the original value. So what exactly does all this mean? Well, with fast printers, we know we need to have pressure advanced calibration. That's also called dynamic flow calibration and that compensates for rapid changes in speed. We don't necessarily need to calibrate for flow with the exception being specialty filaments like wood fiber. Instead, if you want really good results, we can buy brand name filaments which have tight tolerances like Prusa and apparently Bamboo as well. I'm sure there's other brands too that you could recommend. When measuring Prusament, you can actually scan each of the spools and it'll tell you the deviation across the entire spool. You can also measure it manually like I did. But on the bamboo, when I measured it, this spool, for example, which had pretty good print results, had a maximum variation of 0.02 millimeters. Prusa was only a maximum of 0.01. These from Ad North were different by 0.05 millimeters and were quite a bit more. There is also the possibility that these filaments have a cross section that's oval shaped, meaning that it could be even further from the dimension that we expect. Personally, I usually stick with Prusament or Bamboo Filament, and the main reason for that is because when I post my models on those websites, I end up getting points and I can exchange those for filament for free, basically. So I like the idea of sticking with these brands, but that's kind of selfish. I think that a lot of people will have their own favorite brands already, and they might like to stick to those ones. And what I found when measuring the filament is that the flow rate is at least for non-expanding filaments, a ratio of the filament size. So the wood fiber filament, for example, ranged from 1.84 to 1.76 millimeters. It is oversized and so that led to over extrusion on my prints. The rest of the Ad North filaments were much closer to the right sizes. So the question is, I guess, for future printers, is it then possible to integrate a sensor 
which can measure the filament perhaps in the AMS system or along the filament path to the extruder and then take the cross-sectional area and then calculate a live adjustment for the flow or maybe it could be random measurements as well. The best solution is probably to use a high quality filament with high standards for consistency but that's not always possible or if we want to use specialty filaments we might have different results. So I think having an inline sensor for filament size and making the adjustment based on an average filament expected volume could solve the other piece of the puzzle and get us very close to not needing to do any manual flow rate adjustment regardless of brand, material or type. So after all my testing, I think if you're looking to buy a tool changer type printer, it needs to have some reliable method for dynamic flow calibration or pressure advance. Flow rate isn't necessarily a requirement as long as we're using higher quality filaments, which have very tight tolerances. But I do think it's something that would be good to have integrated into future printers when looking at using different brands or different types of filament, which are less predictable, like the wood fiber filament that we tested out here. So far, I'm aware of the Snapmaker U1, which has the automated calibration for dynamic flow. And I also had another look at the Bontac Index, which according to their site, will automatically adjust for different filaments, including volumetric flow. So that's actually pretty exciting. I did not expect that feature. It might not seem like that big of a problem right now, but when we can print with five or 10 filaments at once, manually calibrating the before the first print for the best results is going to consume a massive amount of time. And I think it's something that the printer should be doing automatically using data from different types of sensors like an eddy current nozzle pressure sensor. And while we're on the subject of tool changer printers, I think it's also important to talk about what feeds into those and that is the filament and how we're actually gonna keep that filament stored and we're gonna keep it dry as well because for some of these printers, they have them, for example, on the Snapmaker mounted to the side and it's just exposed. And I can't imagine myself loading and unloading those filaments all the time. It's probably just gonna be left on the side of the machine. On the other hand, with what I've seen from the Bontech, there really isn't a perfect solution. I don't know if they're still working on one or not, but they have a roller system off to the side in one of their videos and the filament can just feed in. But again, it's all just exposed. So unless you're in a humidity controlled environment, it's not going to be ideal. I think the more filaments that we have, the less likely we are going to be to want to load and unload those to be able to store them constantly. So maybe a controlled environment of some type is going to be needed or some sort of filament storage that's dedicated just for those machines is another good option as well. But I mention this because I think it's something that we should keep the pressure on for these tool changer printers in order to have the best solution from the beginning and not just wait for people to experience some of these problems that are related to filament absorbing moisture. So let me know your thoughts on whether you think tool changers are going to be as popular as I'm thinking and which ones you think are the most important types of calibration as well. I hope you found this video helpful and if you did, make sure you give the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more content every single week. It is very much appreciated. And thanks to my generous patrons for helping to make these videos possible and thank you for watching. I hope to see you on the next one. Well, I think the answer may be inside this printer and its unique approach that takes it. I think there might be, and the answer may, I, there could be, and the answer might be inside of this printer here, the Bamboo H2D. It's in you, well, I think there might be, and I think the answer is inside of this printer here, the Bamboo Lab H2D, and the unique approach that it takes. Oh, God. You can see the progression of what it's gonna do, and right in that list, fourth one down, Help. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> so let me know your thoughts on which 